I recently completed four years Masters of Engineering in Architecture and Environmental Design, so slightly different from the last of Architecture in that I did a bit of engineering as well. Um, so my fourth year project then was um, called From Swords to Plowshares, um, it's such an old biblical reference um, that basically when people came home from the war they'd recreate or yeah, recreate their swords into um, farming instruments that they then use. Um, so a bit about my project. Um, so last summer I worked closely with some people that worked on the DNRC, which I guess is kind of where my inspiration came from in the project. Um, so my design brief was to for a centre um, for military rehabilitation. Um, the DNRC very much focuses on uh, a medical perspective, whereas my building I came from a lot more perspective of you just leave voluntarily from the military, you don't get that much support, especially if you're not in that for that long. Um, so your life skills and also your mental health can be quite lacking. Um, so onto some research that I did. So some key research. Um, the site was in Tottenham Hale, which is in the wider scope of London. Uh, I found one of the most interesting statistics on that screen was that 20% of the homeless community are actually um, veterans, which is quite a hard statistic to uh, swallow. Also, one of the key other statistics uh, is that 50% of army recruits um, have a reading age of less than 11, like an 11 year old, which is quite shocking in the sense that if you go in at 16 with, you can go in to the army at 16 with no qualifications, you just need to pass their tests, um, and you can come out at three years later is the minimum, so 19 and you still have no GCSEs, no qualifications, so you don't have that much backing behind you when you come out. Um, so some first-hand research that I did was I talked to four people who were key in um, some of the initial design processes that happened. Um, so Liam in the top left, um, when I spoke to him, he, one of the key things that he expressed was that he'd gone from living with his parents to then living in the RAF, um, and just to give you an idea that when you live in the RAF and you live on base, you just have like a room. But basically all you pay, or all he pays, is £70 a month, which includes his council tax, gas, electric, water, everything. And he doesn't even have to set up a standing order for it, it just comes out of his paycheck. So it's not something that he has to think about. And he, he doesn't know whether he wants to stay in the RAF, but the thing that's keeping him in it is the fact that it's so easy. And he doesn't know how he would live out of the military. Um, so top right then is um, Sue Harris, who is a client manager in Beeston. So she's part of a charity called Forces in the Community. Um, so they help veterans. Um, they come out when they come out with mental health issues, but they also help them just fill in forms and get the funding that they can get. Because um, that's something that they really struggle with. Bottom left is uh, Callum. So he. When you're in the military, you definitely like live and breathe it. Like you work on base, you li live on base, uh, and there's a strong sense of community. So he said, for him, when he came out, he just missed having his friends around him all the time. Um, and one of the key things that he said helped him was he got involved with his mum's parish, local parish church. Um, so he had that com other community that he went to, so he thought volunteering would be a really good place to start with that. Uh, and Stephen Lee, who, he didn't, he's given in his notice, he probably would have left by now, actually. Um, and he already struggled with mental health, but he found that, like, nature and stuff like that really helped him within that, so that was a key part of my design. So in summary, three of the key themes that I took from it were um, a support, community and nature, those are the key themes that I talked to. Uh, and then relating that to the spaces that um, were in my building. Uh, so you had on-site residential accommodation, including uh, rooms that shared kitchen and living facilities, as well as studio rooms, and uh, also like completely private, so single apartments, and also family apartments. So kind of that pro progression from like being with people like you would have been on base to living alone um, was really important. Uh, support facilities, so things such as a community room that, uh, like the forces in the community had in their facility in Beeston, 
uh, was really important where they could access computers because maybe some of them might not have that access. Uh, gym, all of them said that the gym was important, that physical need um, growing from a, such a high intensity job where you'd probably on your feet all day to then not doing much. A lot of people, um, you're quite susceptible, quite a lot of the military is susceptible to like alcohol abuse um, and mental health issues because of that. They've got nothing to do and also like counselling rooms were really important. Um, and then from what Callum said, um, also thinking about a community cafe and having a community cafe within the building. Um, there was actually, in Tottenham Hill, there was already such a strong sense of community and there was a charity there called Living Under One Sun and they had a cafe already there um, in Tottenham Hill but it was actually proposed to be demolished in future Tottenham Hill plans. Um, so the idea theoretically was that they would move into this building and it'd be like this bridge between the military community that needed a place that they could put all this energy into so they'd volunteer within this cafe and then there's also like the natural aspect so nature is quite a strong point um, the connection with the outdoors and having like allotments on site for the cafe um, so my design response um, so my <coughs> concept was quite simple really um, so it was kind of like trying to mirror um, the journey that a veteran would go through so they'd be quite when you come out of the military you don't you you kind of only socialise with military, other military personnel. So it's kind of just, as you get more open up to the community that you're in, the building would open up more. So spaces that are private would be a lot more less open, and there's spaces like the community cafe, which would be completely open, would have a lot of connection with the nature. Um, besides from like general site analysis, um, I also looked into like pedestrian access, so to the north of the site there was already quite a lot of residential and then the south of the site there was actually a school which I thought would be really good in terms of linking up with um, so that the veterans could use school facilities and the school could use our facilities that we had um, and creating like a path between the two and within the site. Uh, yeah and then some just key things that I pulled was like getting, there's quite a linear um, quality to around the site, so pulling that from it, addressing like the north street. So you'll see in a second that I put the residential towards the north of the site to mirror the uh, residential that was already there. Uh, yeah, and then just retracting from this and having this like route through where people could walk. Um, so final design then. Um, so the pink is like all the residential. The yellow is the support stuff and the blue is like the community cafe. Um, so yeah, on the north of the site was all the residential um, and then there's these like private gardens between that and the main building in the centre. The top left room is the community room, so it's got access from both the west and the east side where the big, the east is like the private entrance for the military and the west is like the public entrance where people, they could both, everyone could come there, use the computers, use it as like a social area. Uh, and then obviously at the bottom there's the big cafe uh, where everyone would gather and socialise. And then when you get more east of the ground floor, it's a lot more of the educational thing. So as I said, when you come out of the military, you do struggle um, to get a job. So the idea was that did hold classes there which get your qualifications so that you can find that easier. Uh, and then on the first floor, uh, there's obviously more accommodation on the north and then the gym and more private areas on the first floor, like the counselling rooms. Um, so yeah, one of my main images cut through um, the support Places so like that's the kitchen um, classroom, which is where they <coughs> hold like cooking lessons because you don't really you don't have to cook on base. You can just go to a mess and get it all prepared for you. So where yeah cooking classes would happen, and then moving across on the first floor there's all the counselling spaces, and on the ground floor is a computer room, and then it moves across to the private gardens and the accommodation, and there's the three different
types of accommodation in that the ground floor was the studios, first floor it's the, uh, you've got a, bath, uh, a bedroom and then you share kitchen and living and then on the top floor it's just like a private flat. Um, which leads to my final image of a, just a 3D uh, image. So the allotments are on the south with the main building in the middle and the residential on the top. 